Hello there, Seraphim17 once again. This is my Witcher 2 Dark Mode Difficulty video walkthrough. We're in Chapter 2, and this is the Queen Harpy contract. So, it's not been that recent since I made this guide, or in fact played Witcher 2, but that's not really going to stop me from being able to hopefully impart some of the knowledge that I learnt when I played it. So this particular contract is good on, on a few counts. The first one is it's going to enable you to get the ingredients that the feathers, sorry, that the harpies drop, which include feathers, teeth, and all, and claws, and all that good stuff. Because these items sell for so much, it's, it's kind of baffling how much they're worth. And it's going to enable you to get a whole bunch of orans really quickly. And now that we've got this contract, it's pretty much going to establish where these harpies are, and where you can go to fight them. And the thing with Witcher 2, uh, Witcher 1's probably the same way, but I, ha I still haven't played that game too much. I still haven't beat it, which is kind of a shame because I've had it for a while. And it is a really cool game. But the thing with this title is it has this stigma around it. This, this kind of, you know, it's very tricky, it's very eclectic, it's very specific. And I even got a message from somebody saying to me, you know, can you make a video on how to play The Witcher 2? And this is all because it has this reputation of being, you know, quite dense, quite difficult and, and hard to, to get into and come to grips with. And I don't think it is at all. I think the first one probably is because the first one's got some super anal stuff that you only really see on PC. But that is all trimmed out for this. This is definitely a console game, this one. They've, they've made it much more intuitive and the game helps you a lot more than perhaps you think it would. So there's no real need for me to make that kind of video. Because to play this game you just put it in and play it. It's one of those games where you will learn it just by playing. There's nothing too tricky that you can't figure it out yourself. Because that's what I did and there's times when I can be you know just as slow and as unresponsive to the game's hints and tips that it's throwing my way and I got through it just fine, you know, I had a lot of fun. It was tricky at first because I thought the combat was kind of shitty and I still think the combat's kind of shitty. But it was still very playable. So my advice to anybody who's wanting to jump into these games before Witcher 3 comes out is just don't overthink it. You know, just less thinking, more playing. Just jump in there and, and see if you like it because if a game is too overcomplicated and too dense for you to enjoy yourself in, in you know your first one to three hours of playing it, maybe it's not for you. Maybe it's just not your kind of game. And what's the point in wasting 20 hours on something that you still don't like? It just seems really redundant. But you'll notice just then, uh, when I left that room after talking to those NPCs and updating some of those quests, I've just cut the the content to that where the harpies are and we're beginning our descent towards the the mine so hopefully you know where this is because you've been playing along with the walkthrough and if you're having trouble with this particular mission it's probably not these areas or finding it it's probably the fights inside this next area because they are kind of tricky on on dark mode but you'll notice at the top of the screen uh, i've drunk some tonics some potions the, the one I always use, which is the Falker's Blood, to give me that damage boost. The, the other ones, I believe, are from this area. You can get them. There's quite a lot of those passive rune areas that you can use your medallion to, to hook up into. And the only thing you want to bear in mind with the Harpies is they can kill you really fast. Like, this is a strategy that works on every enemy. It is literally hit, get out of there, hit, get out of there. It is the action game 101. And every enemy on this game can kill you fast, so you need to make sure that you're not tanking anything unless you're using the Quen um, sign, which I've already made it well documented that I'm not going to be using that sign because I prefer Ard. And it's funny that there's a lot of these spells that are directly referenced from the books if you've ever read the, the Witcher novels. And the, the funniest thing about the novels for me personally was he uses the signs in the first book without ever really giving you an idea of what the hell they are, where they come from, or what they do. Like, he uses the art quite a lot, 
and all it really tells you as far as the description in the book is how he's holding his hand and what it does. Like, he puts it towards somebody and it gives you the impression that it's doing something to them, but it's not that specific or clear. So it's one of those kind of weird moments where the author's kind of just expecting you to know that when he puts his hand in a funny posture and a light fat happens, he's doing something fantastical and you just got to go along with it, which, you know, in a traditional narrative, I'm all for having it to be mysterious, you know, when you're first using the ability, but later on at some point, you have to give some context for what the fuck it is. And he never does. Like, it's, it's one of those kind of crazy dense fantasy novel pieces of jargon where he just expects people to understand that the witcher uses these kind of magic spells and he has a name of one he has no explanation of what it is where it came from or anything just go with it <laughs> it's just the you know forbidden magics of the witcher which i found really funny and I had an advantage over just somebody picking the book up because I'd played the game, so I knew what to picture in my head. When he, you know, when he said he was using the hard sign and then he chopped this demon, I knew what he meant. But everyone else is just like, "What the hell's an ard?" Because <laughs> it's a pretty obtuse word. <laughs> but if you were to pick a console on which to play this particular game on, I would definitely say PC. Because just looking at the sheer amount of edits that I have on this timeline from how many loading sections I've trimmed out is astounding. And this is installed as well. So this is a game that really knows how to load for, for all the wrong reasons, really. But you'll notice, too, that these, these harpies are on fire. And if you've not been keeping up with the guide, I do have a, a rune, I think they're called, enchanted on my weapon that adds it some fire damage, which is a percentage-based attack. And it's all about just getting that extra oomph from your weapon. And you're going to need that on this difficulty, especially in this particular area, because this is mob happy. There's a lot of moments where they just throw a shit ton of enemies at you for no reason, and some of the spawns are less than fair. Like, you'll walk into a room, and five harpies will come from behind you, and they'll block the entrance, so you can't get away. And sometimes they can pin you in, in corridors which you can't avoid, and if you can't evade, you, you'll just get murdered and... As a precaution to this, you want to be saving a lot. This is all stuff I've already iterated. You know, any game that allows you to save at any moment is a game that you should be utilising that facet of. Like on PC, it's a quick save key. On console, it does take a while, which is kind of douchey. But hopefully that'll be a thing of the past with the, the next-gen consoles. But the, the audio cue's the best bet here. Like, listen for them. And just be aware that they can come from some pretty dodgy angles. Like, I think most of these are, are fine. It's just one or two towards the, the final area of this level. Because I did die. And I remember dying. And I remember feeling like, you know, I'd not died in ages. It was being a really smooth recording. And then I got screwed by something I, I kind of thought was unfair. Yeah, you'll also notice I've got the, the ability underneath my life. I think, it, is it adrenaline? I can't quite remember the the names of things which is not too useful but such is the the bane of making walkthroughs as much as i really enjoyed this game nobody was watching it on the channel so it doesn't take precedence over the newer titles coming out and when i say no one was watching it people were watching it just nowhere near the amount of people that warrant it to be you know a big focal point which is a shame too because i do think this game is underrated like when people talk about fantasy action RPGs, you hear a lot about Dark Souls, you hear a lot about Bethesda games, you should hear more about Witcher games because they are truly, truly really good. And they keep evolving too, so it makes me wonder what the, the next one's going to be like. Uh, it's just a shame that they've delayed it. But, more happies, more attacks, more good stuff. I don't quite like the noises these harpies make. It's very satisfying cutting them down. Like I'm, I'm curious if I'm going to go back to this game because I did have plans to do certain things. I did get a little bit obsessed with it. And I'm one of them gamers where, uh, for most, games just are kind of games to me. I can play them a few times, I can enjoy them, and I can move on. But if I get into a game, I get really into it, and I get into it super deep. And 
That's a tough spawn just there. Two of them directly behind you when you drop down. That can be quite rough. And then another one turns up. But they're never generally multiplayer stuff. Like, it's never multiplayer oriented. Because it's just not the type of player I am. So it's, it's generally single player oriented and it's generally story focused. It's usually very deep on story. I get really deep into, you know, the lore of the world and the, the, the atmosphere of it more than the, the actual narrative. Because a, a lot of these fantasy games, you can look up, you know, lore videos. Obviously, Dark Souls is a big one for this. Elder Scrolls do have lore videos. And any game that has a story probably has somebody covering the lore in them now because it's such a popular topic. But for me, it's... It's more a case of the world itself and my discovery of it. As much as I enjoy lore videos, I prefer to to discover it myself. And I think this game did a fantastic job of not patronising you. It kind of told you all these fantastical concepts that were in the books and expected you to understand them or to respect the fact that you didn't. And I liked that a lot, so it made me wonder, you know, what is this Volgan place with all these traders? What is this? What is that? What does this mean? And It made me read a lot of the books um, in the actual game. You know, listen to the, the conversations and the optional stuff and read about the politics of the world. And A lot of it is directly taken from the books, which gives it that extra added credibility, which I really liked. And... I liked this game so much. I just wish there was more to it. Like, I wish there was more elements that changed enough to warrant, you know, replaying it and replaying it and getting different results. Like, the builds, you know, the, the statistics on this game. I, I wish the builds were so diverse and different that you have to play it five or six times just to fully understand each of them. But they just kind of weren't. This is another tough spawn, this. This is a lot of enemies very close. And any one of them can kill you. Like, look how much of a beating I'm taking. Very dangerous stuff right here, guys. You want to be super careful. And on PC, apparently there's a, an extra difficulty. I forget the name of it, but it's, it's above dark. And I can imagine that. I can imagine the game being harder. Because once you get over that slump at the beginning where it's really hard because you're really shit, the game definitely gets considerably easier. What the hell was I doing just then? I, I must have been checking my capture device or my phone or something because I was just walking into walls like it's my job. <laughs> but look at art. It's such a sexy spell, man. I, I miss playing this game just by throwing ads at people and then going in and capitalizing on that weakness. And I love the fact that you can use it reliably. Such a cool idea. Like that to me is perfect. You know, having a, a reliable stun move that has a percentage rate of enabling you to do counterattacks which instantly kill. That is my dream right there, guys. That is that is up there with a lot of the abilities I enjoy a lot. But there was a, a crossfade just then, folks, and the reason for that is after you kill this particular enemy, there is a very big spawn of harpies. And uh, this big spawn of harpies killed me. Because I didn't for some reason I didn't expect it to happen and I got unlucky with how they stacked up and I got trapped in a corner and I just they mutilated me is, is the easiest way to say and I don't think it's this one I think it's the next one because the next one is as you progress back through this cave and there's a lot of them and it's it's just questionable because where the hell were they earlier and I know it's a very gamey thing and I know it's one of those things where we just have to accept it because that's how games are but it's bullshit and it's after you interact with this stone, I believe. I could be wrong, though. It's Like I say, it's been quite a long time since I've played, so do bear with me, folks. You'll notice I'm enhancing my blade. Like, you can tell I'm getting ready for war, because something really bummed me earlier. Like, look, I'm putting bombs on. When I'm putting bombs on, it tells you that there's a lot of enemies really close, and they do a lot of damage. So, boom, look at that. Look how many fucking harpies there is. Like, wow, just... I've not seen this video in a while, and that's stunning me just how many enemies there are, because they can pin you in, and there's nothing you can do. So, be very careful there, folks. That is some bullshit enemy design on that point. Just, it's too many. It's far too many. Like, if this thing gets a full combo off on me, just one of them, I'm dead. And they all can attack at the same time. So just imagine that. Like, so dumb. But we manage it, we get, we get through it. 
And there goes the queen. So yeah, just just be careful. It's if it was a big environment, I wouldn't have any problem with that many enemies because that would be super fun. But just the fact that they've put it in these tiny caverns, it seems really shitty of them to do that. And really intentional too. It's just the ultimate surprise butt sex moment. And no one enjoys surprise butt sex. But pick up all the good stuff. And then the only thing left to do here, guys, is backtrack to... Is it Vergen? I can't remember the name of this place. It's been too long. And... Obviously, you want to use this machine to look at all the dreams as well, because they're pretty useful, and they, they will help you out. But once you've done that, you can just get back, and you can reclaim your prize for doing the happy contract. And uh, I'm going to let the rest of this video play out as I watch all the video, all the crystals, because this is also going to help on another quest coming up, I believe. But uh, I will catch you in the next video, so thank you for watching, and you take care now.